In November 2019, my partner and I took a trip to Costa Rica. After a couple of days in San Jose, largely to get over the long flight, we travelled to the Caribbean side to Puerto Viejo. We briefly returned back to San Jose to take a trip to Tortuguero before picking up the hire car and driving to La Fortuna. After a few days in La Fortuna and Arenal, we drive down to Monte Verde before the final leg of the trip where we drive to the Pacific coast to stay in Punta Arenas. So here we are at Puerto Viejo. We're staying at the Banana Azul. Very, very nice place. You can walk straight onto the beach. Nobody about at the moment, although it's half past six in the morning. But we were on the beach yesterday afternoon and there was just hardly anybody about. Absolutely fantastic. Look at this, even got coffee. Coffee by the beach first thing in the morning, sweet. As I say, you literally just step out and you're pretty much straight onto the beach. And if you want to walk into Puerto Viejo, as we did yesterday, we can walk all the way along this beach into the town behind me. So we're kind of in a, in a cove, a big bay at the moment. If you walk to the other end where you can see the bit of land that looks like it's sticking out, that is, uh, that's the centre. So a leisurely walk along the beach, probably take you maybe half an hour. So yesterday we did do our trip to Tortuguero, which is on the Caribbean coast, close to the area of Limon. And it was a long day, about 12 hours. We got picked up from San Jose and brought back again. And on this trip, we got to see and learn a bit about banana plantations. And then from La Pivona, the, the dock where the boat goes out, got the boat and took a trip along the river. Lots of twists and turns along the river, which I really like the habitat there. It's kind of like a swamp habitat almost with all the, the trees really low into the water and quite a lot of wildlife, which is fantastic for me as a wildlife photographer. Lots of egrets and herons, other birds. And we did get to see a crocodile as well, which I managed to photograph. Crocodile. Okay. It was like the worst rain imaginable, that's pretty much what we had. So if you go on that trip, do be prepared for very wet weather. I'll take a change of clothes with you. And here we have Anika Anika. Hembra. So guys, uh, it's just black. <laughs> 
Ahí, por eso este sí. He visto. Really well organized trip and excellent guide as well. So we're now in the region of Arenal, the volcanic region in Costa Rica. Uh, we drove from San Jose in the hire car. Uh, we did stop along the way, so it probably took us about four hours in the end. But we'd say we did stop for something to eat in La Ramon, which is a really good place to stop. There's tons of restaurants and uh, you get something to eat there. Um, plenty going on in that town. But here we are close to La Fortuna, which is about 20, 30 minutes drive away. We're staying at the Las Iguanas Resort, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we definitely consider it luxury loads of room loads of space here uh, kind of like an outdoor shower which is interesting and a hot tub over here as well and um, this area is famed for the uh, the big volcano as you can see there really nice and clear view of the volcano so yeah I think we've had like one really good view of the volcano when we first arrived there's there's always really low cloud there so generally speaking you have to wait a little while to actually get a good view of it seen a lot of hummingbirds and the tanagers as well uh, but definitely hummingbirds were here So today we went to La Fortuna Waterfall, which is one of the main hotspots in this region. And I think it took us about half an hour to drive down there from our hotel here, at Las Iguanas. And we paid, just paid to go in. You can do a tour, but we just went ourselves. And you can go in and walk down to the waterfall. Do be prepared for the steps. There's over 500 steps down to the waterfall and it's pretty steep and you've got to get back up again. So do bear that in mind. How many steps did you say there were? 500. 500? Yeah. Well, exactly 500. No, we said about 500 steps. Okay. Uh, if it's good weather you can actually swim at the base of the waterfall itself if the weather's not so good as it wasn't today then there's a calmer area of water kind of just around the bend where you can swim so we took our swimming gear and went for a swim in the river which was very very cold but after a few minutes it's not too bad so I'm glad we did it and as I say if you do it yourself it's, it's not going to cost you very much money so this is our last day here uh, at Aranel and we're going to go and walk around the bottom of the volcano this morning and then we're going to head off to Monte Verde to the Cloud Forest. We know in England the hottest part of the day is so like between 12 and 3. Yeah. Um, well, the sun goes down at like 4 o'clock here. Half 5.
I know what it is. That made a fantastic picture. Because you just looked like you were just staring at the ground. I was watching a butterfly. You were watching a butterfly? Yeah, it was um, red and white and black. Okay. So we are coming towards the end of our trip now, coming towards the last leg of the journey uh, and the last two days have been a, a bit of a blur really. We, uh, we spent one night in Monte Verde and that was so that we could go and do the, the zip lining and the hanging bridges. The hanging bridges, anyone can pretty much do that. It's just a round walk about three kilometres with eight bridges in there to cross. Uh, the zip line, I think you need to be a bit more adventurous, uh, not for everybody that one. Uh, it's a bit of a case of facing your fears really, including the Tarzan swing, which was definitely uh, which is definitely facing my fears to do that one. So we're now on the Pacific coast, the Pacific side of Costa Rica, and we're just down from Haco, I think it's Herradura, I'll put it up on the screen, and the hotel that we found, we were going to stay in Manuel Antonio, uh, but the hotel there looked a bit out of the way, so we actually decided to change hotel to this one, which is the Punta... I'll put it up on the screen, I can't remember the name, punt or something, and I've got really good access straight onto, onto the beach here. This beach here is actually really good for swimming, it's really nice and calm, uh, unlike the beach further up at Hako. Uh, but we're going to go to another beach tomorrow, we're going to take the shuttle from the hotel and down to the beach, which is supposed to be really good for snorkeling, which I enjoy. So. Gonna hopefully tomorrow gonna be doing some snorkeling, maybe even some kayaking as well. So this is our last morning uh, here in Costa Rica before we head home to the UK. I do hope that this video is useful if you're considering visiting Costa Rica and particularly if you're thinking of planning everything yourself. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the experiences along the way as well. So I'm going to give you a little extra bit now at the end of this video, which is just going to give you some more tips about Costa Rica, about traveling in Costa Rica in general, and uh, some specific tips about each location that we visited. Well, San Jose, uh, you're probably going to spend some time in San Jose because it's the, the international airport where you're going to fly into. Um, just be aware that in the capital, San Jose, not a huge amount of people speak a lot of English. So that's just something that I wasn't aware of. Uh, or maybe expecting so just bear that in mind it just help if you know a little bit of Spanish or you've got a little Spanish phrase book um, one thing I would mention is the pavements in San Jose are like death traps to an extent and sometimes the pavements are really really bad and um, parts of it will be missing they'll suddenly disappear so it might seem like a little thing but obviously it can be quite a quite a hazard at times particularly if you're a woman walking in high heels Puerto Viejo, uh, this is one of my favourite places. Where we stayed, it was probably close to a mile from the hotel to the main centre, to the town. So do bear that in mind, you can walk along the beach or you can also get a taxi, which I think was about $6. Um, the, the sea there is absolutely fantastic. So if you enjoy a nice warm sea, then that's, that's the place for you. The sea was surprisingly warm. Um, 
reasonably strong. And our hotel, Banana Azul at Puerto Veo, was actually the first, was actually the only place that we got a really good view of a sloth as well. So if you want to see a sloth, um, maybe that area is good. Maybe we just got lucky, but we had the most amazing views of a sloth from our hotel. Probably the most important thing to mention about Puerto Veo, if, if you're traveling there from San Jose, uh, the route is, is quite a tough one. So we took a shuttle. When we took it, they were actually doing the road. So they were widening the road, which caused um, a massive amount of traffic and holdups. So it put a lot of extra time on your journey. So it took about five and a half hours from San Jose to Puerto Veo in, in this minibus. It was quite uncomfortable. And I say the journey, it was quite a tough journey really. And then obviously you got to do it, you know, we had to do it back again. La Fortuna and Aranal. Uh, we really enjoyed this section of the trip. So we drove from San Jose in our hire car and uh, we stopped along the way um, in San Ramon, which is, is, is quite a big town and there's loads there. There's plenty of restaurants and places to eat, so you can stop, good place to stop off, uh, gas station as well. Yeah, we stopped for about an hour and it probably, it took us maybe around four hours, maybe a bit longer to get to uh, our hotel in Arenal. And the route is pretty windy. So once you get off the main road, you've got a very windy route. You definitely want to take it take it slow. Uh, we went to La Fortuna Waterfall which was definitely one of the best experiences of the trip. It was $15 or $18 something like that per person and you go in and there's there's lots of facilities there which is great so you've got a reasonable sized car park, uh, you've got um, you've got toilets, there's a little gift shop as well and there's a, a cafe where you can get lunch, drinks. And the waterfall, you have to walk to the bottom, uh, which is over 500 steps, and then over 500 steps back up. It is really tough. You need a reasonable level of fitness um, to do that. And also, it might be raining, which it was when we arrived, which is potentially gonna make uh, the steps a little bit slippier as well. So we went into some hot springs as well, um, which they call it hot springs, but basically it's like, um, it's a hotel with heated swimming pools is what I would describe it as. So if you're after that experience, natural hot springs, then um, check, look into it a bit more. Um, there are free hot springs. So along the main road, kind of between La Fortuna and Arenal, uh, you'll see a load of cars and you'll probably see people walking up in their bathrobes. So there are some free springs down there, but um, it's up to you whether you do them. Uh, we were advised not to do it because potentially cars could get broken into and stuff like that. But I don't know, I think there's actually some people there sort of guiding the cars in like stewards. So I think it's probably reasonably safe, but yeah, you do actually park pretty much on the, on the main road, on the side of the main road and then go down some steps. So if you want to do free springs, you could check that out. Um, Aranel, the volcano, you can do walks around there. You can't actually walk up the volcano, and um, that's illegal, I believe. But th I think there's about three trails and they're along the bottom, um, kind of through lava fields. And then there's another trail, which is, uh, I think it's called the Pinnacle, where there's a really good tower, really high tower, where you get the most amazing view and the best view that I've had of the volcano. So you'll kind of go to the main entrance to get your ticket, and then that gives you access to those walks around the bottom or to the, the pinnacle area where we went. Monte Verde, uh, we only spent one night, almost like one night and a day there really. We had to change our plans a bit and we just went there specifically to do the zip line and hanging bridge tour. Monte Verde was quite an interesting place. Um, it, it, it's not a big place, but there's enough places to stay, enough places to eat, etc. It To me, it, very, it felt very crammed. Um, everything felt quite crammed in. Uh, it can be very difficult to park there. All the cars, a lot of the big 4x4s are all sort of parked along the side of the road. So that can be difficult. Um, I get the feeling that it's more like, a, more like a destination, which it is really a destination for those adventurous activities. So I think people who are there are really going for that or more kind of backpacking. It has that feel to it. Um, so we only stayed one night, did the zip lining tour. Zip lining, yeah, I definitely recommend it. I think after, after about three or four zip lines, it all pretty much feels the same to me. I don't really need to do another eight or whatever it was. Um, the Tarzan swing, that was different, so that was well worth doing. And that's a little bit different from the rest of the zip lines. Uh, if you're adventurous, definitely give that a go. And the hanging bridges, 
I think as I said earlier, anyone can really do that. Uh, from our hotel, we, we stayed at a B&B &B called Cal Calathea, or Calathea. Uh, definitely recommend that. It's very, very modern, not been there very long. And from there, we, we, uh, we did the trip. We all got an organized trip, so we got the transfer in the bus and it took, um, I don't know, a good half an hour probably to get to the adventure park where you actually do the zip lining. And there are facilities there, toilets, places to eat and everything that you need. And that brings me to the last place, uh, which is here, which is on the Pacific coast. We managed to get a booking here at Punta Leonis, which is a big resort. So if you come here, it depends what you're after really, but it is like a big, almost like a seaside resort. You've got access to a private beach and you've got, um, I think there's three restaurants and you've got various activities. The beach here is absolutely beautiful. Further up at Hako, the beach is very, very strong. Probably not advisable to swim in there unless you're a very strong swimmer, but it is fantastic for surfing, which is probably why most people go there. Here, this beach is, it's still pretty strong, but it's perfectly fine to swim in. It, it does feel a bit different to me here on the Pacific, on the Pacific side of Costa Rica, as opposed to the Caribbean side. I would say on the Caribbean side, I just felt uh, it was a little bit more relaxed. And generally speaking, I felt people were a, a bit more friendly. The food and the drinks overall, I felt were better on the Caribbean side. Food in Costa Rica, I've had some of the best food I've probably eaten. I do enjoy my food. Uh, Serbia, I've had some of my favorite food, but Costa Rica, I've really enjoyed the food. Obviously, like anywhere, you're gonna get some places where it's not so good, but on the whole, the quality of the food is fantastic because everything just tends to be really, really fresh. Uh, if you enjoy meat and rice, you're gonna be happy. Uh, tacos, casado or burrito, all that kind of um, typical Costa Rican food is usually very, very good. Again, if you, if you look for the sodas, S-O-D-A, sodas where the locals go, they tend to have the better food. And also some fantastic fruit drinks, not like um, really artificial, but made with uh, real fruit, natural fruit drinks, which are fantastic. If you're looking for somewhere to eat in San Jose that's quality, not too expensive, then check out El Barroco Loco. I think I said that right. Really good, really good food. Uh, prices, if you live in the UK, then I'd say the prices are very, very similar to the UK. So if you're getting some lunch, maybe you get it for about uh, seven or eight pounds for a reasonable dish. Obviously you can get little snacks cheaper than that. And in the evening, uh, it, really, it really depends where you're going. The grackles are so noisy. Uh, it really depends where you're going, but you could get something for, you know, 10, in terms of dollars, 10, maybe 10, 12 dollars. Or if it's a bit more expensive, you could be paying around 20 dollars for more of an upmarket restaurant. So it totally depends where you're going. Driving in Costa Rica, are you gonna hire a car? Um, I was a little bit apprehensive about it. And you read a lot of things about various, um, <laughs> various issues on the roads in Costa Rica. Um, it, it wasn't too bad in the end, but if you're gonna hire a car, you just you need to keep your wits about you. You will get things appear in the road. You will get obstructions you're not expecting. You will get traffic jams. You will get people walking in the road, people standing in the road selling things, bikes, uh, various animals might appear, fallen tree trunks. We actually saw those things, almost every one of those things on this trip. And the main thing is that people just don't seem to indicate. So I don't think you need to indicate in Costa Rica. Just don't, just don't do it. Um, so <laughs> the, the cars will probably slow down and you wonder what they're doing. It's just because they're turning, but they're probably not indicating. The, the most difficult part of driving is probably San Jose. So getting in and out of San Jose. We used an app called uh, Waze, W-A-Z-E. Really, really good on the whole. Kind of got it wrong a couple of times, but generally it was really really good actually uh, it's the first time I've used a, a sat nav like that and yeah San Jose is very difficult um, even if listening to the GPS just for the nature of the traffic um, and some of the driving that you encounter around San Jose it's it's definitely not the easiest definitely a bit stressful but once you're out onto the open road the roads themselves I think are excellent decent roads and traffic's usually not not too bad when you get to other places like Arenal, around La Fortuna, you're gonna get very windy roads, you're gonna be up and down. And then if you go to Monte Verde, definitely look that up. If you're gonna to go to Monte Verde, make sure that you know which road you're gonna take because we, we just took the route that the sat-nav took us and 
um, that was like one of the worst roads I've ever driven on and it was a little bit nerve-wracking so it was I mean it was like a dirt track with rocks and rubble which then turned into a, a muddier dirt track and we did that for I believe over 20 kilometers maybe nearly 30 kilometers so we had a 4x4 luckily we booked a 4x4 I don't think we could have done that in a car that wasn't a 4x4 so uh, yeah expect everything when you're driving on the roads you just got to constantly try and have your wits about you keep your concentration uh, but if you do that you'll be fine uh, we've had so many experiences I don't know which ones are going to be the best memories but so many experiences so many memories seen so many things Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.